Hello friends, in this video I will show you how to use and balance a 5 inch Maxutov telescope on the Star Adventurer 2i. To be able to balance this telescope you will need to use two counterweights on the counterweight bar and after this you will be able to attach the telescope on the declination bracket and also other accessories like an astrophotography camera. And here we do have a uh, planetary camera, the ZW224MC, with two times barrel. And here we have a quarter of an inch to two inch adapter, and here a few extension rings. Using the setup, I will be able to have 3000 millimeters focal length with the SkyMax 127. And we need to connect this camera to a laptop. We have clouds here, so probably I will capture Jupiter at home. We mounted now the SkyMax 127 telescope here on the Star Adventure 2i. We placed the finder scope, we placed the camera. So add all the accessories you need to use before balancing. Let's check now in declination if it's balanced. The SkyMax 127 is very easy to balance in declination. You see, it's balanced. You just need to find the right hole here. For this I use the second one from the beginning, the second hole, place it here on the declination bracket, locked it and we are balanced in declination. Now let's check here in right ascension. So in right ascension we are almost balanced, almost. So for this I will move this weight a little bit on this part and now we are balanced. Let's see. Okay, so this is the most important step to balance properly in declination and right ascension. And having this telescope balance, you can also do astrophotography. However, it will be difficult at this focal length at 1500. But you can try at the Orion Nebula with some short exposures. And I'm confident that you can capture beautiful details of the trapezium. So, here we have, we have the SkyMax 127 balanced in both axes, right ascension and declination. We can connect here the camera to a laptop and try to find Jupiter. And let's see how we do that. So, we have clouds now, but Jupiter should be in that direction. So let's say... I want to aim at Jupiter, I will just move it like this, release, now tighten the clutch on the declination bracket, now release here the array clutch and go like this. Pro tip, check here, tight good here the, the legs, be sure with heavier equipment that are tight. Okay, so it's tight now. So let's loosen, loosen again. And you see, changing here the position in declination, it unbalanced it a little. It did unbalance it a little, but not much. So, if this happens, you might need to readjust here. I moved just a little bit the weight, just a little bit. So now we should loosen up here the clutches, both of them, also this one and we can move freely now. And I will just watch here to the finder scope. I will move also in right ascension and declination until I can see in the finder scope Jupiter. So let's say we did find it and I will tighten the clutches. Okay, so let's say now we have, the, we have Jupiter in the field of view of our finder scope and the next step will be to make Fine tune alignment in declination if we need, like this, small amount, and if we need also in right ascension. What it will help you first to place here a diagonal mirror with an eyepiece, find first the planet in the eyepiece, and then place the camera. After you found it in the camera, because this sensor is very small and with very small field of view. 
Then you should place also here the two times bar low lens and find it again. Probably it will still be in center if you manage not to move the mount and the telescope. And now we will go with 640-480. We will use here Roy selection. We will go to the middle, center it using Roy. Almost. I think now is almost. Okay, now it's fine. We have 30 frames per second, and let's try a new video. Start. So very nice results with this camera, the SV1 and SV305, very good results also on Jupiter. It's also possible to take nice deep sky images, even if it is not a deep sky camera and it has smaller pixels. It is a little bit difficult on this test because I have a long focal length, 1500. I'll save it for 5 minutes. I will also show you the results after processing the images. I will film the moon using my Skywatcher Skymax 127 telescope, the SV Bonnie SV305, uh, 2.25 barrel lens, and my Star Adventurer 2i. I want to show you now how to use the Star Adventurer with a telescope like the Skymax 127, how to use the clutch. So you see here I did unlock and it's balanced enough. I can move it like this in light ascension. I can make corrections here also in declination. I can loosen up the clutch here to make fast adjustments or slower here with this uh, declination uh, bracket. Okay, and if it's balanced, if it's the balance is very good, you can even leave the here the tracking on. Here the balancing is almost perfect. Maybe like this, or like here, and you see now it stays very good. And I can also turn it, it will not matter, the clutch is loose, like this, so it will not engage the motors. If I will turn now the, the clutch, the motors will engage and will start tracking. If the balance is not good and you have heavy setup, like 5 kilograms, you can just go and turn off the motors if you want to be safer or leave it on and stop the motors from this button. Stop. And if you go back to north, the motors will start again. Now I'll go back to N. We'll start tracking. And to find the moon, I just will, I will go here. I will look into the viewfinder. Uh, loosen the clutch here again, like this, and now it stopped tracking. I will turn the clutch back, okay, and we should see it there on the screen. Now we can focus and image the moon using the Star Adventure 2i. This is how you can use the clutch with a heavier telescope. I will lower it again like this and seems I'm here on Copernicus crater. Start capture and let's go with number of frames 1600 frames start